So, what are we doing today, Jen? Denim! Hi. Hi. <laughs> so, what was that? Uh, so, a couple of years ago, <laughs> Paul and I went to a denim-themed work Christmas party. So, we thought, if you're doing denim theme, you definitely have to do Britney Spears, Justin Timberlake, denim on denim. I was denim. going to say, there's no denim like double denim. Absolutely <laughs> not. You just need to have all of the denim in the one outfit. Oh, all of it. All yeah. Together. So, that was, um, I thought I'd pull that costume out again. Give it another run. Well, there you go. It's a reuse. Absolutely. Reduce, reuse. <laughs> we're, and we're all about that, aren't we? <laughs> we are. But seriously, denim, excellent fabric for reuse. Absolutely. And there's so much of it around. There is. And there's such a huge environmental impact of not reusing it. Exactly. Like from the very beginning of the life cycle right through to the end. Um, I'd been reading this book recently. Uh I haven't got very far because it's pretty depressing, to be honest. <laughs> it probably is a good thing to be aware of, um, in, you know, if you're into recycling, trying to reduce your impact on the environment. Carbon footprint and all that. Yeah. 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 Um, so because denim takes up so much of the world's resources and has a huge impact on human humans. Yep. We definitely need to make sure we get the most out of it. Yes. Make the most out of it. Yep. Use it, reuse it, remake it. You know exactly. Get bang for your buck on your denim. Perfect. Yeah, and we. Um, I've been doing quite a lot of um, mending of denim. Oh, I yeah. have uh, an addictive pile of mending books, <laughs> um, but mainly what I mend is Paul's jeans. Right. So they're forever becoming shed jeans. You know, you wear it so you get the holes. Then Fix it them up. Shed jeans. Then it gets put into the pile of turn it into something else. Right. Yes, for the good bits. Yes. Yep. So once the crutch. Can no longer be replaced. Yeah, there's only, the so many, there's only so many times you can patch that up. Yeah, there's only so much chafing you're willing to uh, to, to put up with in the, in the crutch area. Right, yeah. so. We're definitely going to use denim. That's what we decided. This That's for this issue? Yes. Yeah, denim for this issue and we're going to. Go wild. <laughs> go wild. Yep. Yeah. So I know what I'm doing All and right. it is very wild. <laughs> Kind of. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's not denim on denim. It's not an everyday look right. because uh, I have some everyday denim looks. Uh, what I want to do is I, years ago I found a kimono pattern and okay. I saw um, a lot of um, people making like work jackets out of it. And so I have that pattern and I'm going to turn it into a sewing jacket. Um, because the room where I sew is extremely cold. Yes, okay. Yep, Queenslander and it's like uh, the enclosed balcony. All right, yeah. Yep. So it's been, it's been transformed into a room, but it doesn't have the insulation that an internal room might have had. Absolutely not. <laughs> so I always get really cold uh, when I go in there, so I'm going to make a jacket, lots of pockets. Oh, you can put your scissors. Yep. Are you going to line gonna it? it all. Yes. Right. Yes. So I've got a, uh, a sheet. I've got to line it with a sheet because I think that the denim is going to be warm enough. Um, and not without itself. Me. Yeah. And it is um, great for upcycling because of that. It's such a heavyweight fabric. And very durable. Very durable. And, you know, you can reuse the smaller bits, patch them together. Yeah. I feel like something that's taking away from the durability of the denim, though, is elastane. Oh. I, I have like such a hatred of <laughs> elastane in denim. I tried to buy a pair of denim jeans. Every pair of jeans, they're not jeans. They're not denim jeans. They're, I don't even know, they're jeggings or something disgusting. Everything's stretch. Oh, which is, I mean, it looks great when it's new. I can't but wear then, it. <laughs> just, I'm not really a tactile person. Really, but, You really don't like your, your jeans attacking you from, from the no, outside. No, I did discover there's something called a mum jean which I really object to having to buy mum jeans. But they're the only ones <laughs> with that weren't full of elastane. Without elastane. And I did see that I uh, saw, you know, a post yep. on the on the socials where somebody had popped um, a pair of jeans into their compost and, you know, yep. dug them up six months later and all it was was an elastane skeleton of where jeans formerly were. Oh, gosh. So, I mean, you can't leave that in your compost, can you, because then you've got microplastics yep. everywhere and... You're ruining a good thing. Yes, denim, such a perfect resource. Elastane, contaminating it. Yep. So, boo, elastane boo, boo. and denim. Yep. But 
there are still gems to be found. Exactly. There are, there are some Noah Lastane gems in the in the thrift shops. Yep, and in Paul's uh, rejected ah, denim section. In the rejects. Actually, I found the best the best recycled denim. Super excited. Everyone was like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe you brought that home. I was at Bunnings. Right. And I found some denim jeans just abandoned, just lying in the car street park. Street denim. I know. Yeah, street denim was a thing. Car park denim. That's got to be the best environmental um, rescue mission. It is. Did they wash up okay? Yeah. There you go. They wash up fine. from the car park to the scoffs of onlookers. Yep, and I can incorporate them into my wonderful denim look. But what are you doing? I've talked all about me. All what right. about you, Liz? Well, here's the thing with me. I don't really wear blue. Okay. So denim with the traditional indigo nature. Yeah. Not really for you. Not really. Well, not really for me anymore. Right. When I was younger and I could pull off more colours, yes. Yep. So what are you going to do? If you, if you, are you going to get like a non-indigo denim? And- well, yeah, I was thinking I'm going to go for a non-traditional white denim. Yeah. And then I was going to... Bubble, bubble, toil and trouble style, dye pot and mix up some colours. So turn it into a colour you would wear. Yes, but I'm, then I'm going to make a bag. Because well, I, like I feel like the the super heavy weight that you can get in denims is yeah. perfect for upcycling into a bag. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You probably wouldn't have to interface it as much. Uh, it's a more stable sort of. Yeah, I think yeah. it would be great. I am no bag maker though. So it, it's going to be a journey. You'll be able to see the trials and tribulations of somebody who's never made a bag before. Ooh, I'm excited to see how that turns <laughs> out. I, I'm sure that I'll be able to direct you to resources of people more able, more bag I, I able. Have, I have utter th- faith, faith in you, Liz. All right, I'm well, sure it'll turn out fantastic. Yeah, well, I'm sure it'll be fun anyway. Yep. You know, $3 worth of denim, yep. $15 worth of dye. <laughs> <laughs> as you do, we'll see as you do. We can, we'll see what we can put together. I'm also going to incorporate, I think, yeah. the bottom half of some, not strictly denim, yeah. but King G workwear. That, yeah, uh, similar sort of thing to thing, denim. Though. Yeah, yeah, so a nice heavy weight. I think it's the same weave. The fabric oh, is, is yeah. made in the same weave. Anyway, so I, I have a mate who likes shorts. He doesn't like them to be as short as the, uh, yeah. as the, as the current King G's. Yep. He buys the pants and I have to off. hem them. So, so you've I, got plenty of it. I end up with an abundance of three quarters of PG legs. Yep. Yes. So I'm going to incorporate some of those into my project as well and see what we can put together. Fantastic. That yeah. sounds like fun. So a bag and a work coat. Yep. And um, maybe sashiko Ooh. sort of stitching. So a bit of, a bit of embellishment. Yep. Well, look, I've got all these books. I really have to use some of the some of the skills out of there. Yeah. There's some really cool things. Um, I mean, I'm sure everyone's seen it. But I just I just love all the patterns you can get with them. Yeah. And I mean You're doing denim. Yes, you're doing denim. <laughs> so not not being of um obviously we're not gonna be able to do true oh. sashiko because we're not no. we're not of Japanese descent. Yep. And we just don't know anything about it, let's be no. honest. But the people who've written these books they can it's their in, thing, and we can we can have a go and follow their instructions. Follow their instructions, yeah. See, where, see what we can put together. Perfect. Yes. All right. Well, let's actually do that then. Yeah. All right. Let's stop my around. <laughs> Hop to it. My inspo for this episode was necessity. Let me explain. Originally, a house looked something like this. Everything about these Queenslander homes is designed to keep you cool. At some point in history, the sides of the veranda have been enclosed, and that's where my sewing room is. Let's just say it's Arctic in winter. Back in 2020, I bought this now discontinued wick steam pattern because I knew it would make my dream sewing room chore coat. When denim came up as our theme for this episode, I knew it was the time to stop talking about this coat and start making it. I'm going to use similar coloured denim jeans for my fabric and lay the pockets to form my dream tool pockets. I'd love to do some Sashiko inspired stitching like I did on these jeans for my son, but I'm lacking patience at the moment and I'm so, so cold in my sewing room. I just need it done. I'm going to do lines of neon stitching with my machine to hopefully still give it that crafty feel. Here's hoping it turns out how I've been imagining. So here we go. I picked similar colour jeans and um, because I thought that would give a bit of cohesiveness to my jacket. All righty, especially if you're making fancy stitching and things. Absolutely. So um, butchering the jeans. (laughs) 
yes. chopping them up. I didn't bother unpicking them or anything like that because it's all heavy duty stitching on jeans. But I've kept all these little bits because uh, there's a jacket I saw on Free People years ago, so I thought I would Ooh, try um, and emulate that. Yeah, maybe down the track. Uh, this here was a um, a thrifted bed sheet that I had. Okay. Been storing nice. that one for a few years, waiting to find a project for it. In the stash. Yep. I thought yes. that the geometric sort of pattern on it would uh, work quite well. I think so too. Yeah. It's a it's striking. Yeah. Striking design. Did you unpick pockets? I tried to save those pockets, um, but I've got to say it took a lot longer than I thought to try to unpick the pockets. <laughs> it's very, um Yeah. If you had have unpicked all of the jeans, that would have been a very long project. Yeah. When I was doing this, it kind of made me realise that was the right call. Look. Oh, look at that. Ready to go. Ready-made pockets. Perfect. Um, and so I thought that to make things easier, I sort of tried to make um, chop the jeans to be the same size. So okay, square, square the bits off. Yep, so yeah, so big panels. Big square panels was what I was going with here. Right, I I didn't, didn't, did you sew them together then to make your um, and then cut your pattern pieces out of yep. that? Okay. Yep, that's the whole process. So the panels were not quite long enough. Um, you'll see a little bit further along. Okay. See, they're not quite long enough. So what I did is I um, used the little off-cut bits to sew on the end so that the panels were going to be long enough. Did you sew them on different ends or all on the yes, same end? no, different ends to kind of make it a little a bit more interesting. And because it wasn't exactly the same colour, it sort of meant that it was kind of that patchworky, yeah, mishmashy sort of um, colour. It's a bit of a vibe to it. Yep. Very That's nice. what I was going for. Definitely vibe. <laughs> the vibe. The vibe. Um, sewing them all together. So it's just a pretty traditional patchwork technique. Did you finish the seams on the inside or? No, because it's fully lined, I didn't need to worry too much about doing that. Um, though, uh, but I ironed, ironed all the seams. Oh, yes. It. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So ironed them flat so that they weren't making a big lumpy bit. Yeah. So these are all my neon threads. I do have an excessive number of neon threads. Uh, <laughs> I, I made, do have to say I don't have a neon thread collection myself. I don't think many people do. <laughs> I um, double threaded it to make them a bit, a bit thicker because with denim you want to have a thicker, almost like a top stitching thread. With? Yeah. yeah. Yep. And it, it's very striking. Did, was it hard to get it through the needle? Is that? Um, no, no. It went through. I used the automatic threader. Oh, easy. Yep. But um, I tried to pick a stitch length which would give that sashiko kind of feel yeah, to a, the end result. A little bit of a hand-stitched vibe. Yeah, exactly. It, it does look lovely. Yeah. So they were all left over from when I made a quilt for Katie years ago. The neons? Yeah, the neons. Ah, there you go. But I've always been, I've been waiting for another reason to use them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and uh, so the good thing with the pattern is the lining was the same as the outside. Okay. So make the line, make the whole thing up, try it on. Oh, See yeah. how it's going. So you could make it in the lining first mm. before you cut it out of the um, out of your outer, especially if you were patchworking your outer. Yeah, I wouldn't have wanted to muck that up. No. no. I've got to say my wonderful friend Liz taught me that in the previous episode to, to use the lining to make use the things. lining. Mm. Oh, it's, so. uh, it's less expensive to um, to completely remake oh, um, absolutely. If, you, if, you, if, it's, if it's completely wrong and – it's a cheats way. Absolutely. Lining's almost as cheap as muslin fabric. It is. It so. is. And if it works out, then you've saved yourself all that time. Yes. It's, it's quite heavy, actually, um, all those jeans here, here, as I said, ironing all the seams open so that it would sit nice and flat. Yes. But it, it's actually quite heavy. Hard to muscle through your machine or? Um, no, with the walking foot that was okay. But it gives me kind of a... Um, a weighted blanket sort of vibe when I'm wearing it, which I really love. So not only is it comfortable, it's comforting. Exactly. Amazing. Perfect. Yeah, oh. it's really uh, uh, one of those projects that I had wanted to, you know, when you've been meaning to make something for years and it's, then by the time you get to it, maybe it's not as good as you imagined. Yes. Yeah, this is even better than I imagined. So It's just perfect. It is, yep. S sticking it all together. Clips. Pin, pin, pin. My new best friend, Clips. Yeah, I did use a bit of a mix because um, I the sharp pins, sometimes the clips, um, because the fabric was so heavy, they were kind of popping off. Oh, or, or they wriggle and pull through a little bit when it's very heavy. Yeah, so, um, yeah, to trying to get some of the bulk out of that seam there. With the Oh, that's the underarm seam? Yep. Yeah, okay, because it's a, a, a grown-on sleeve. Yes, you, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so it's um, past the curve, that's where it's sitting. Right. I uh, did actually muck this up 
Not this Do you bit. have footage of having to redo it because that's my favourite kind yeah, of footage? Yeah, that, that, that's, that's coming up. There is always going to be footage of oops, uh, should have made a muslin, should have thought this through. The old oops, I did it again, again. Yeah. Right. There's there's always going to be both kind of clips in this uh, because I you attach the right sides together, the lining to the complete uh, The whole circumference? Yep. Right. And then you're meant. I don't actually know how I managed to screw it up. <laughs> That's probably the worst talent. thing. Yep. I managed to sew the ends of the oh, – I'll tell you when we get to it. All right. We'll see. Pictures of. Ooh. Hang, hang on for that bit. Layering my pockets on. It was kind of fun figuring out what I, what I usually lose in my sewing room. So I wanted to keep on my person and then choosing pockets oh, accordingly. Yes. Well, it's got to be scissors for yep. a start. I've never – they're always at the other end of the table. So I get up, I cut things out, I sit back down at my sewing machine and then when I get to the end of the, <laughs> the seam, I have to get back up again to get the scissors. I always leave them wherever I last was and I can never remember where it was. Here's me unpicking it because I somehow, when I got to the end of the sleeve, had the right side to wrong side. <laughs> <laughs> It's like you've never sewn before, Jen. Who knows how that happened? Here I'm demonstrating the correct way to do it. Excellent. Still don't even know how I mucked it up. Crazy. Okay, so yeah, so you've got to put it through, pinch it together yep. so that it's right and then yeah, yep. okay. That makes then sense. I'm not going to remake that mistake. But the funny thing is I actually did it like this the wrong way and still did not realize. <laughs> you didn't realize you around. were looking at the back of the fabric. No. No, oh. I just blithely, happily sewed it all. Okay, so the cu- they, uh, so the cuff is essentially t- top stitched. Mm. Shut. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, it was a really cute finish, and if I'd read the pattern properly. You would have done it right the first time. I would have, I would have, but I kind of thought there's like four pieces in this. How hard? <laughs> How, How hard can it be? possibly be? <laughs> yep. So this is sewing on the collar. It's got this really great wide collar that's folded over on itself. So Okay, so it's a double denim on both sides of the collar. Yep. Stitched on on the inside and then top stitched. with Exactly. The, yeah, okay. Exactly. That's it. Very nice. I can't wait to show you how wonderful it looks, Liz. Oh, look, I'm excited. I l- just, I'm loving the close up of the stitching. <laughs> just there, it's making my heart sing, Jen. Oh, it's all those little things. You can <laughs> tell you're into sewing. Yeah. Okay, so this one is not so much inspiration as something I need. I need a new handbag. When I was in my early 20s, I had a really cute retro bag that I loved that looked like this. Because it was the early 2000s, though, it was tiny. So small I couldn't fit my purse, phone and sunnies in there at the same time. So I'm going to make a handbag, but a bit more practical size. The challenge I've set for myself, though, is not to go mad buying all the bag making supplies and to try and reuse or upcycle as much as I can from what I have. So I'm going to use the jeans and the dye, but I'm also going to use some pant legs left over from alterations. The remnants of a thrifted sheet, some bias tape from my favourite remnant store and some leftover macrame cord. Some thrift store continuous zip left over from the dress that I made in the last episode. The plastic bottom from a grocery bag and some press studs that only have half the parts for. So I guess we'll see how that goes. Okay, so here's the raw materials. Ooh, looking good. Yeah, well, I thought I'd give it a try. The, um, the, the RIT website has... All of these fabulous colours. And I it has, had no idea that they would have that. It's so cool, isn't it? You could, you just have to um, click on the one you want and then you look up the little formula and it tells you which combinations of packet or liquid dyes and then you make any colour of the rainbow. That is so amazing. So you're not really uh, limited to the number of, of the colours you can see at the no, shop. No, no. So oh, here's the outcome of the first go when I didn't follow the instructions that well. I can't believe those deep instructions. <laughs> the instructions are so good. But in the end, after a second die run, we did come Closer. quite close. Yeah, so yeah. I just wanted it to be warmer and turns out tangerine and golden orange aren't the same colour. Who, who would have thought? <laughs> who would have thought that they would give the specific instructions for hundreds of colours color, and you would need to follow them? Mm, I know, right? But here we go. I've got the leg that I chopped off originally. From the PG? Yes. Oh, no, the, the white one is the leg that I, I chopped the bottom oh. of the leg off to start with. Yes, yeah. yep. And then the King G leg that I warmed up a bit in the dye bar. Yep. A sheet. Yep. Then a bit of plastic from the bottom of a, from a non-woven 
Woolies bag. bag. Yes. Clever. <sighs> Some continuous zip that I got from the op shop for $2. You get so many bargains, don't you, if you look in the crafty section? You do if you keep an eye out. Uh, this is macrame cord that I yeah. bought from a, for a previous project and it's going to be standing in for piping cord today. Brilliant. With some uh, some bias binding. Yep. And this is a pack of uh, snaps that I thought was such a bargain for $2, but it turns out it only had half the pieces in it. So not actually good for snaps. <laughs> so they're going to be standing in for bag feet today. Perfect. All right. So in the same way that you did cutting apart along the seams. Excellent. Yeah. None of us were particularly insane for okay. this project. No, no time for unpicking jeans and jeans and jeans. No way. I actually have been meaning to say for ages I love your um, pa- pattern weights. Oh, the dominoes. They're not quite heavy enough but I'm just so in love with them that I use them anyway. <laughs> Worth it. So there's a lot, a lot of uh, pieces and so, so I, I thought I'd include a lot of footage of cutting out so you really got the feel for how long it took. And you didn't actually use a real pattern. Like, no. I mean, I, it's a real pattern but you made it up. No, I did make it up, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is a... a a tip for first timers if you need the pocket off first yes if you need to use the bit of fabric under the pocket take it off before you dye it but we did squeeze it out of the remainder it worked okay perfect but yeah i did i drafted the pattern because you know i was specific and i always just want what i want (laughs) but turns out i don't really know anything about so so bag bag making just because you can design patterns for kids and adults yeah, it turns out it doesn't stretch to bag making that well. But we managed to work it out, and I'll put a link to a YouTube video that I relied quite heavily on for the information. Yeah. But all of the um, pattern pieces are interfaced. Yep. So the only the only new thing that I bought was the, the woven interfacing for the outside of the bag because it just needed to be a bit firmer. And okay, then I yep. used the non-woven interfacing for all those lining bits that you see. Yeah. There are so many pattern pieces there. <laughs> so we tried to magic these together. Yeah. Uh, that didn't work, so I had to try the conventional method <laughs> where I just sewed them together. Um, Excellent. But I just applied these guys to the to the front. And, you know, they would have. Um, so you didn't piece the whole front, you did a bit of applique. I did, yeah. So yep. I, cut, I cut the whole front in the orange and I just thought it would, being a bit stiffer is not going to hurt the front of a bag. No, exactly. So, so I thought I'd just add it on there. <sighs> 70s, fabulous. <laughs> I can see your inspiration here, Liz. It's so fun. It's like bowling a actual bowling bag so there's our there's the front in all its glory that color is so good it it turned out okay didn't it Mm. i think i had yellow in my mind to start with yep um but then picked a color that was orange i noticed when i looked back at the footage i thought why did you pick orange and then expect it to be yellow uh Anyway. They gave you too many options. Well, gloss over. Yeah, I was so confused. With a whole page full of yellow, I managed to pick an orange. <laughs> it's a skill. So uh, I didn't in- I didn't interface the pocket yeah. because I didn't line it and I didn't want it to be interfacing okay. on the inside. So I just sewed the, the zip straight to the oh. straight to the thing. Yeah, yeah then- I was looking at that thinking I can't. I can't like, see what you're doing. What is she doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so just really cool. zip tape straight to the front there. Yep. So there's that guy and he and then making a bit of piping. Have you done piping before? I was going to say well, it might surprise you to know that I've not ever done piping before, but I thought that I'd make it out of bias binding because I've heard that you cut your piping yep. um, on the well, bias. I, I, always went, I always do it this way. Oh, okay. So not too crazy. I feel like I didn't stitch close enough to the edge yep. of the piping of, yep. the, of the cord yep. and then... And my bias tape was probably a bit wide, okay. so it needed to stick out a bit when I sewed it on. So it's a little, yeah. it's a little loose, but it worked out okay in the end. Nobody's going to notice. No. So I, I researched bag handles. Yep. Yeah. Uh, decided not to go with any of the ways that people the did. Traditionally made. No, and I thought I had this grand, grand plan for how I would do it. Yeah. This is the point where I find out why. That's not <laughs> the way you do it. Just turn that inside out. Easy, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and we've glossed over that bit there and we've moved straight on to the pressing of it because that did take quite some time and it my fingers were quite It wasn't as simple as what you thought it would be. It really wasn't. But once you got to that, once I got to this stage, you, it looks like, like a smooth sailing. <laughs> Just uh, stitch that bit and there you go. That's so awesome. Did you uh, interface the back handles or? Yes. So yeah. the, it's just four layers of 
fabric in yeah. the folding and um, with the woven interfacing on, but it probably didn't need anything that stiff either. Yeah. The, 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 non, the non-woven medium would yeah. probably have been sufficient. But Ooh, that's that, it. Oh, so cool. And the coolest thing about using um, zip pulls and zip tape is that you yeah. can put two, two zips on from different directions. Nice. I think this is such a clever thing with your bag feet. Well, I, I – Make th- do. I, yeah. Well, I just really wanted to challenge myself to not buy a whole lot of specialised fittings. Yep. Um, so here we go. Obviously, I'm not going to get the hammer out on my dining room table. So yep. you just have to imagine me going downstairs and using right. the hammer to hammer these in. So this is the magic of television. It is, yes. Yeah. So those are on and we're, uh, we're away. Off and sewing. Yes. So – Did you have to unpick any of this? Because I was, I was going to say, this is, seems to be going really, really well. Well, there was, I, uh, hmm, any. Definitely some. <laughs> <laughs> it's looking it's looking really good. There was a, the, some, it, here we go. Here's a bit that doesn't look quite so tidy. If you see that little pin tuck there, that's me being too lazy to yep. unpick that and make sure it's lined up properly and just. It's a bag lining. It's the lining in the bottom. Nobody's going to ever see that. (laughs) Don't let anyone go. You're rifling through your handbag. And then you're always safe. Yeah. But, yeah, that's got the little, that was the removable base, so I can take it out to wash it. Oh, clever. So everything else, because everything else is just interface fabric, should wash up all right. See, there are some techniques that's from clothing making, work pocket. Yes. This is not, when it, when I got to this bit, I was like, thank goodness, something I know how to do. Confidence. I love how many. Did you use all of your clips there? Is that every single I, one you I, own? No, I have a bulk lots of clips. <laughs> um, I but, like how you went from no clips at episode one to all of the all clips. All of the clips in the world. Do you know what? This is just the lining. Once you see, you should have a look at the number of clips that I get on this this bad boy in a second. This, so this so is, it gets even more impressive. It gets even more than that. So this is wow. trying to get the... Um, basically the gusset from all the way around the bag um, onto the curved front and back panels. Yeah. And there you go. Beautiful. (laughs) Beautiful. I just eased it all the way. But it turned out okay. See, that's um, that's without puckers. So I was a happy girl. But probably that's probably where I've been going wrong. More clips. More clips. All the more clips. I'm going to do it the Liz way next time I make a bag. Yeah, see, all all ready to put that other side of the bag in but then realising – uh, oh. How am I going to turn it in the right way? Oh, no. The whole thing's just sewn inside out. I, I yes. feel less insecure when you get the unpicker out. <laughs> it's not even my favourite unpicker. It was the only one I could find. Yeah. But once I opened up the bottom of the bag lining, now we're sewing the other side on. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, this looks like some nighttime sewing. <laughs> Did your making of this bag take longer than you expected, Liz? Oh, you mean you mean not just the one, <laughs> not just the one happy day, all wearing the green outfit. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, it did, Jen. Excellent. It took significantly longer, but that's okay. Everything always does. But this is the bit that you've all been waiting <gasps> for. The bag. That is just the most disturbing turn of phrase. I I don't want. I've been to some birthings. I don't really want my handbag anywhere near <laughs> anything that goes on at a birthing. But here we go. We are turning it in the right way, though. Yeah, this is a fun bit. Yes. When you see all your hard work suddenly come together. Da-da-da, da-da. Right, and so this is. Oh, yeah, you put turned it all through your pocket, did you? Well, no, I, I did open the bottom of the bag. Okay. Then I sewed the bottom of the bag shut through the bottom of the pocket. Yep. And now I'm top stitching the pocket shut. Yeah. It's one of yeah. those things that I didn't know the first couple of times I made a bag, but that is such a clever way to do it, isn't it? It's so fun, isn't it? The only the only top stitch sort of seam on the inside yeah, is the bottom of the pocket. It. Yeah, beautiful. Look at that! I was so impressed with myself. I put that. I put this on the dining room table and made everybody eat their dinner around it for more than one day. Absolutely, and it's better, <laughs> better than flowers. Who needs flowers? You've got to admire the workmanship. Although my husband did take one look at it and pick the only bit of uh, stitching that had gone awry, which was actually on one side of the top stitching of the zip yeah. around the top. You should have turned that bad boy around. <laughs> He Make says it so to me, you can't see it. Now that I know about sewing, I can see that you haven't really <laughs> done a great job here, babe. Oh, <laughs> Excellent. Cruel, cruel. <laughs> it's all right. Nobody notices. So there we go. Base is in. 
Ooh, look at you. Looking very serious. It was it was very bright sunlight. That's my only <laughs> excuse for this facial expression. I think it's cute. It's it's a uh, coming it's because you didn't want to look be trying to look cool like you did last time and well, now you're trying there's to so many different ways to screw up the facial <laughs> i think it's adorable I, I love how it was like the dressmaker the movie the dressmaker yes. was what i was going for here it's very cool waiting at the station exactly rural in pull, setting pull that whole sewing machine down with me look at those pockets full of everything anyone might want yes easy access fits your phone as well yep. tape the whole lot i love it the stitching turned out so cute as well, didn't it? It did. It did. And um, those jeans with the – I am thinking about doing some stitching over the flowers at the front. Oh, that would be cute with a, with a white, a bright white or a – I was thinking neon. Ooh. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that scissor action. It's so good. <laughs> And you, Liz. Wow, oh, look at this. I love that bag so much. Oh, it can't is. use a zip. <laughs> well, you know, you can't all be perfect. But Got your sunnies. I really should have found a way to wear my sunnies in my bit of video clip well, there. Well, see, that's the workaround for the glare, isn't it? Perfection. I could look cool at the train station. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, it would appear that zip pulls would have been an excellent uh, addition. <laughs> well, you know, can't get it right first time necessarily. And I can still add those on, I suppose. I think I might also add a crossbody strap because I think that this could go, could get heavy with yep. how big it is. So I could you really. Put so many things into it, couldn't yeah. you? Those colours look so good. It's 70s fabulous, really, isn't it? It is very cool. And I, I don't know if you've noticed, I do wear a lot of yellowy orange, so. Perfect. I it's exactly like can... the bag for you. <laughs> I feel like I can pull it off. For sure. So the question is, of course, what are we going to do next? Who knows? <laughs>